Good morning and welcome back to Planet Alt History. Today we are going to discuss what if France never centralized. We all know France and France was one if not the most powerful country of Western Europe, even Europe during the Middle Ages. France has a very interesting origin, and the French draw their origins from the Gauls, from the Romans, and also from the Frankish people, in particular the royalty. After being briefly known as Gaul or Gallia, France was for many years part of the Roman Empire, hence why they speak a Latin language, French. And it was then later on conquered by the Franks, became part of the Frankish Empire, hence their name, France. They didn't take all of it immediately, but fought against many other factions, the Frankish people. They had, for instance, the Soissons or the Siagrius realm, which was called Soissons. They also had their own factions within the Frankish people, and also there was uh, the Burgundians again, and then the Visi and Ostrogoths. Charlemagne, he went on to become the successor to the Western Roman Emperor. He was recognized by the Pope and even to some degree by the Eastern Roman Emperor. And later after his death, well, that's where the first problems occurred. Well, first of all, he had a successor, but then his own successor was the one who divided later on the Empire, because it was normal that every son should have his own part, his own share of the empire. What happened next? Well, Western Francia became what we know nowadays as France, whereas also Eastern Francia became what we know nowadays as Germany. But before becoming Germany, it became the Holy Roman Empire, and it was fairly divided. Some people, well, they have asked themselves the question, why did Eastern Francia divide itself up and why did it not happen to Western Francia? Why did it not disunite? There are many good reasons for it. But first of all, let me explain that in Eastern Francia or the Holy Roman Empire, they suffered a lot at first from the Slavs or the Hungarians who came to raid all their parts. Also, the fact is that geography contributed a huge role and a huge influence in the creation of both countries. I mean, France has the advantage that it has also very much the access to the Atlantic Sea. It also then has the Mediterranean, then it has the Pyrenees, the Alps, and there are only some parts that are kind of open for invasion. Whereas Eastern Francia, it has a very flat geography and it is literally in the middle of all the actions. Wars and what not happened a lot in there. I mean, just look at it where the Roman Empire had many wars, where later on the Germanic tribes came. It all happened in that particular area. And then we also have the fact that Western Francia had because of this geography, a more united culture. It became Gallo-Roman. There was this influence of the Romans, but still there was influence of the Celts, hence the Gallo-Roman culture. But, well, the Eastern Francia part, it had many different cultures. And still nowadays you will find regional oddities when you go to northern Germany and when you go to southern Germany. Yes, that's still a thing. As a result, most of us can see why the French had it easier to centralize and why they could stay united. Furthermore, the policies of the French kings, they, well, it was always much better because they tried to always keep that part united and they were also successful to a certain degree, whereas well, the German counterparts, they were just looking for their own benefit and yeah, they did not want to unite and every little duke wanted to do his own thing. But what if all of that changed? What if France never centralized? 
we could theoretically take a few different approaches. We could just go on and say that the English would win the Hundred Years' War, that uh, West Francia would get the Emperor title instead of Eastern Francia. Or we could also say that uh, France at one point would be split, especially after the Napoleonic Wars. I will not go with any of that. I propose a very different point of divergence. The point of divergence that I propose is one that may seem a little bit odd at first, but you will get the point very soon. Let's take a look at Aquitaine or Aquitania. Aquitania is in the southern western part of France and it borders Spain and the Atlantic. At some time, a certain dynasty, the Ramnulfids, ruled that part of France. And France was in the period of total federalization. France's kingdom wasn't questioned, but the French king didn't have really that much of an authority everywhere. We are around the year 1100. William X, Duke of Aquitaine, in 1137, joined the pilgrimage to Santiago de Compostela, but died during the trip. So let's say that he did not join that pilgrimage and that he would be still alive for many years. During that time he could still get the son, but I believe that his wish on the deathbed may not change. He would probably manage to marry off his daughter, Eleanor, to Louis VII. But since William X would be able to have a son, Aquitaine wouldn't pass over to the French crown. Since William X, his son, William XI, wouldn't be an adult yet, it is possible that the French crown could meddle into the affairs because, well, that happened very often, didn't it? And with that said, Aquitaine never becomes part of England because Eleanor never marries with the English king after divorcing from the French king. But due to the fact that France and England already had problems surrounding other issues, this would give an interesting scenario nonetheless. Let's say that afterwards when William XI comes to age, and Eleanor being the same ambitious but still manipulative person, as in OTL, the, she could somehow manage to set up an alliance between her brother and the King of England. And that would be enough to keep France busy with its own affairs. Fearing how the French King would meddle into the affairs of the many duchies that exist, there is also a slight chance that other dukes would join the side of England and also of the Duke of Aquitaine. We will then get an English Ramnulfidian alliance. They would certainly add to the numbers, these dukes and also their uh, warriors, but I don't think that they would be able to suddenly overthrow the French king. Instead, we could end up in a scenario where the French king would be forced to give certain more rights or where he would need to take a different approach to these uh, many duchies that exist, but also England could take advantage of it and they could then secure many more parts like Normandy and many more parts of northern France. We would end up with a French kingdom that would exist in name, but where every duchy would do its own thing, without always respecting what the French king wants. Now keep in mind, this French kingdom won't become immediately a Holy Roman Empire, but the politics will become now much more complicated. We could see fights of the dukes to become the king to this French kingdom, but once a French king would become too strong, he would then get deposed something that happened very often in England. The result of this is that we don't have a continuous line of the same dynasty, but we would see different dynasties taking the French crown, or we would see also different more houses of the same dynasty within, of course, the same kingdom. Normandy will also evolve differently than the rest of France, and no, we won't see a Qatar, Toulouse or southern France, a disunited France doesn't mean that a duke within the French kingdom would then decide to convert to Qatarism because it would not make much sense. The later crusades will most likely even fail war 
because the, due to the French disunity, less manpower can be draw, drawn or sent, and also more French lords, they would have lands due to the fact that the king is more weak, and also they would have their own fights within France, you would see more civil war type scenarios within the French kingdom. The first barons war in 1215 may still be won by the barons because of England's involvement within France and due to the fact that England always had a history of limiting the power of their own monarch. Flanders would probably become more independent and never fall to Burgundy due to the butterfly effects revolving around the region and we could see an earlier independent Netherlands which could even end up expanding towards Normandy or even until Luxembourg. Netherlands would become an important ally to the French crown but also to the Spanish crown. Dutch and English interests could not only clash in Europe but also in the New World and with an earlier and more united Netherlands, Dutch colonization could become more important and influential. What could happen to Brittany? Brittany could over time manage to remain more Celtic and continue to speak Breton. French influence would cease in there and Brittany would have a similar relationship with England as Portugal does with England. These three kingdoms would have an interconnected interest in the new world and they would have many wars against the Dutch, the Spanish and also within French territory. Provence may be more neutral at first, but could quickly end up expanding into Italy and then clash with Aragonese and Italian interests. But due to the fact that Provence was always easily conquered by many people, Greeks, Romans, Ostrogoths, etc., Provence may then fall to Aragon and then later on to the Spanish crown. With Provence in the possession of Spain, England may actually change their policies and support the French crown more often, fearing that the Spanish would become too powerful. It is also very likely that the Spanish would have a more northern border than in OTL, so we would see a border that goes beyond the Pyrenees. France will thus end up becoming first the battlefield between dukes and the French king, and then the battlefield between many important foreign powers, with one or two independent powers within French territory. The biggest change will be the lack of a French Revolution, and without the united France, Germany too may not even unite, and Western Europe as well as much of the world will see a constant clash between the british breton portuguese alliance versus the Spanish who dominate much of Western Mediterranean and the Dutch who would become much stronger than in OTL. Burgundy, Brittany and parts of the French crown lands would stay independent, but only the crown lands would truly become, well, what we know as French. Without a united France, Spain will become a monster, the British will be even stronger and the Dutch, united by Flanders, would be the secret winners, together with an independent pro-British Brittany. And that's where we leave it for now. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed my video. Be sure to like and subscribe, leave a comment, support me also on Patreon and join my forum. Forum.planetalthistory.ga Until next time on Planet Alt History.